This week, we'll learn how to use the Color Checker Passport for setting white balance and adjusting our color in post-production. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. Well, this week we're talking all about adjusting our colors, specifically setting our white balance and then adjusting in post-production. And to get us started, let's look at this question from Daryl and Quack. So Daryl and Quack asked, can you explain how to use the Color Checker Passport to get accurate colors and white balance? Well, absolutely, but before we get started, let me explain to people what the Color Checker Passport is. It's this little guy right here. It's made by x right and it has uh, some different color patches on this. And this allows you to make sure that you can adjust your colors accurately in post-production. And also inside it has a neutral gray card to make sure that your white balance is set accurately. Now, if you're new to white balance, make sure you watch episode 13 of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -One because we talk all about what white balance is and color temperature and all that kind of stuff. Well, on this episode, we're going to talk about how to use this color checker passport to do all of our post-production and getting things calibrated correctly. So instead of me talking about it, let's go over to the studio and let's get started there. Well, now that we're here on set, let me show you how you can use a color checker passport. Now you can use this in the studio or on location. We'll show you how to use it with ambient light, just shooting outside. It works just fine. But we're going to start in the studio. And the setup I have here, I'm using speed lights inside this Apollo. There's another speed light here. I've got a Nikon D7000 and I'm using the commander module inside here. So this is actually sending out signals to trigger my flashes. And I'm using the ITTL mode, so it's all automatic exposure. Now one of the things that's really important is if you are shooting a normal studio lighting setup, you need to make sure that you first meter and set your exposure because you have to have a good exposure before any of this will work. Now the internal metering on the D7000 is going to work just fine, so we're sort of skipping that step. But if you were shooting in a normal studio lighting uh, mode, make sure you meter first to get good exposure values. Well, we have good exposure values because of the metering, and what we're going to do is now we're going to bring out our model. So we have Ellie here. She's going to help us out. Now, what we're going to do here is um, the first thing I need to do is make sure I set my white balance. So I have a gray card right here, and so uh, now that I have my exposure set, I'm going to give this to Ellie. She's going to hold that right next to her face, and I'm going to make sure that I get a nice white balance set. Now, again, if you're not sure how to set your white balance, make sure you look at episode 13 of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one because we go through all of that. So I'm going to go here and make sure that I have my white balance set. So I'm focusing on my gray card, and it says that it's all good. So my white balance is set, and I'm ready to get a calibration target shot. So what I'll do here is, without touching this uh, card here, this little tab on the front, I'll flip this over, and I'm going to flip this back. So now it looks something like this. Now the reason I'm doing that, it's really important not to touch these colors with your fingers, because these are calibrated chips, and so if you touch these with your fingers, the oil from your finger gets on these and it starts to deteriorate things, and your calibration is not going to be accurate. So it's really important to touch the edges, but not the inside of this. So when I hand this to Ellie, she's going to be able to hold this with this back and it won't actually uh, damage any of this. Now there is something that you need to know. It's, there's a right way to hold this and that's with the people and the scenic stuff on top and the, uh, all the colors on the bottom. So that's the way I want that to be held. And then also I'm going to have Ellie hold this right next to her face. It's right there because it needs to be as close to possible as where the light is falling. So here you go if you can hold that right next to your face. And also she's holding it on the key light side of her face. So where this light is falling, that's where she's going to be holding that. So I'm going to make sure I get that to fill a majority of the frame. So we got our shot and you can take a look and see how I've really filled the frame with this color checker. And now that we have that, we have our calibration shot, we have our white balance, everything is set. So let's start shooting. So Ellie, if you look right at me, beautiful. Now we'll just shoot a few shots here. And then once we're done, we'll go into Lightroom and fix everything. Now I mentioned before that this works inside and outside. And so if you're shooting outside, the uh, procedure is pretty much the same thing. You'll set your white balance, then you'll get your calibration shot with the target. And once you have that picture, you can again go into Lightroom or Photoshop and do all of your adjustments. Well, now that we know how to do this in the studio and on location, let's hop over to Lightroom and I'll show you how this thing works in Lightroom because you'll really be amazed at all the stuff that it does. Well, okay, now that we have all of the photos taken, I'll show you really quickly. I'm in Lightroom, 
And the color checker passport is is made to work hand in hand with Lightroom. You can do some of the things that I'm talking about uh, in Aperture, and there's also a standalone application that will help you create profiles that you can bring into Photoshop, Aperture, and other applications. But for a perfect fit, the color checker passport and Lightroom go hand in hand. So let's take a closer look at what we've got here. So this first batch of photos here, this is the uh, a few shots I took inside the studio. The first shot is that calibration shot and then the others. And then here are the shots we just took outside. And again, here's our calibration shot and the other shots that we took. So let's start with this first shot here. And this one is one that we shot obviously in the studio. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go to the develop module to start with. And let me show you a few things about how this works. On the right hand side panel here of the develop module, we have a few things. We have our uh, color temperature that we need to set. We have all of our color adjustments, our hue, saturation, luminance values. And you can see those are broken up into different uh, colors there. Then we also have down at the bottom here, uh, we have this color, uh, uh, this camera calibration section here. Now, by default, the profiles, we have Adobe Standard, Landscape Neutral Portrait Standard, and Camera Vivid. We have all those built in. And by choosing different profiles, I'll just zoom out here and, and start clicking these. You can see that our color can change uh, pretty dramatically from one to the other. We have more saturated blues or darker darks, etc. So I'll put this back to uh, Camera Standard. And what we want to do is use our color checker passport to create a custom profile. And what that's doing is it's saying, here is what brown should look like. Is it actually brown? And here's what red should look like. And here's what all these different uh, colors of gray and white and black. Is it actually gray, white, and black? And if it's not, let's make an adjustment so that the colors are actually calibrated correctly from the camera. And then if you have a calibrated monitor and a calibrated printer, your color is going to be consistent from real life all the way through to the print. So to make this custom profile, it's actually very easy. Now there is a standalone application that comes with the color checker that will allow you to do this. Or in Lightroom, you can just go up here to File, and then you can go Export with Presets, and there's Color Checker Passport. Now this is a plugin that ships with the Color Checker Passport, so you would install this on Lightroom in advance, but it takes a couple clicks to do that. And now we have this option. So I'll click that. Now I have to actually name my profile. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this Ellie uh, Profile because that's the name of our model. And you could name this anything. Usually I put a date on there, maybe a location, something like that. And then when I click Save, what's gonna happen is I'll do that. Now my plugin is looking at all these different chips and it's actually creating a custom profile based on what it sees. This is gonna take a second and then once it's done, it's either going to tell me it's good or that I need to do something different. Now it's important that you have a very large target here. If you didn't zoom in far enough, this probably won't work and you need to crop and make sure this is zoomed in enough. But the best thing is to make sure you get a nice close image of this. All right, now it says this has been generated successfully. Now the thing is you have to restart Lightroom to activate the profile. So I'm gonna click OK and then I'm gonna restart Lightroom really quickly. Okay, so I've restarted Lightroom here. It's just opened up and everything looks the same as it did before, except now when I go down here to the right-hand side on this cali camera calibration section, if I click that, you can see right here, there is my LE profile. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna make sure you can see this full screen. Now I'm gonna switch between camera standard and LE profile. So it's on camera standard right now. I'm gonna click LE profile and you can see that colors change. So specifically, look at these blues over here on the color checker passport, and as I change between standard and my custom, you'll see that these chips, the blues and the reds, those change pretty drastically. So again, camera standard, back up to my custom profile, and you can see the color shifting. So now that I have it set to my profile that I created, these colors are correct. This is actually what uh, we saw in nature. So it's absolutely right. Now again, you have to have a calibrated monitor to make sure you see these colors correctly. But now we have a calibrated target, a calibrated profile, and we have a great starting point to adjust colors. So now let's talk about all the colors that are in the color checker and what all these different swatches mean because it's really important to, to understand this. Now the top panel here, this is for making your adjustments. So these middle two patches right here, so I'll just zoom in here. 
These middle two patches here, these are for setting your color temperature and setting your white balance. So the top set of patches, these are for portraits. So this very leftmost square with a little notch in it, that's for setting your neutral white balance. So I can go over here to the right-hand side of my develop module, choose my white balance tool, my color picker, and then I can click on that. It's going to make sure my white balance is set. So I have a nice custom white balance. If I'm shooting scenics, uh, this middle square here is the white balance I want to choose. So I would choose that and that would make sure that my white balance is set correctly. Now these are neutral targets. Uh, they're a little bit different based on the colors that you would see in flesh tones or in scenic photography. And that's why there are two different patches, sets of patches here. Now you also notice that uh, these have little pluses. So you can actually warm up flesh tones using this top row. So if you wanted a little bit warmer um, flesh tones, you would just click one of these uh, to the right here. So it'll be from cool to warm. And if you're shooting outside, you can cool down those color temperatures or warm them up. And these are neutral. So you're going to uh, be changing the colors across the spectrum equally. So they're neutral uh, uh, warming and cooling effects. So let me just do this with Ellie here in the picture. So here's our first neutral uh, white balance. I can go over here. I want to warm things up a little bit. So you can see that warms her up. So she's got a little bit of a tan. That's a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to pick maybe this uh, middle one here. So that's still warmer than neutral, but it's not so much that it looks unnatural. And so I can just sort of go in here and pick the one that I like. I sort of like this second one. That's the one I use almost all the time. And because these are standard, you can sort of set a style that you're using over and over. And so when you're uh, doing your color temperature, you can bring this in and then just click that and you've got a custom color temperature that's going to be consistent from shoot to shoot to shoot, which is really nice. Okay, so that's how you use these middle two sections on the top. But what about all these guys? These guys right up here. Well, as I go down here on the right-hand side of my uh, develop module, I'm going to zoom in here on this. What you'll see is we have uh, hue, saturation, and luminance, and we have all these different colors that we can adjust. Red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. Well, if you look up here, we have red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. They correspond exactly to these uh, sliders over here. So if you pick this little tool here, you see that now the magenta is being adjusted, which is really cool. Um, if I go over here to the blue, see how the blue is lighting up there? I can adjust that. Now, of course, it's going to be taking some colors along for the ride that are similar but that helps you when you're adjusting these colors over here to understand what's happening in your color palette. So if I'm adjusting the yellow, you can sort of see how that yellow patch just went to gray. And this is really important because in this picture here, there isn't really any yellow. So if I was adjusting this yellow slider here in this photo, well, on my color checker, I could see the change. I can see that change here. I could see it down on my uh, calibration target. Even though I can't actually see the change anywhere in the photo, I can know that I'm making an adjustment that if I had some yellow in a different picture that I was going to batch process, well, I better be careful because I'm actually adjusting that yellow. So it helps you understand exactly what you're doing and what's happening in your photo, even if the photo colors that you're adjusting aren't in the natural photo. It's really, really nice. So you can either uh, click this button over here and then adjust your whatever color you want, orange in this instance or you can adjust them over here and see what the effect is on those patches. So that's just a nice tool there to help you understand what's happening in the hue, saturation, and luminance panel. Down here on this color calibration target, these aren't just random colors. They actually help us understand what's happening in the photo. So let me go through these step by step. This first two colors right here in the upper left hand corner, these are flesh tone colors. So darker and lighter skin are represented right there. And so if those get out of whack, you know that your flesh tones are going to look a little wacky. And then next to that, we have blue and green. These are for scenic photography. So this is what a normal blue sky would look like. And this is normal what plants would look like. So plants and sky. We have those next to each other. The second uh, two, the last two, and the second row, these are just common colors we'd see in a normal palette. And so this just helps us understand what's happening when we're adjusting colors to our blues and violets and purples and oranges and things like that. So that's what those are. 
this third row down here, we have our additive and subtractive colors. So we have RGB colors, so we have red, green, and blue. And next to that, we have our CMYK colors. So we have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So we have those. So we have our two sets of primary colors right there in the third row. And then on the last row, we have some patches so we know from white to black if we have things that are overexposed or underexposed for losing details in the shadows, midtones, or highlights. We have all those so we can actually adjust those. Now the neat thing is we can use all of these tools together. So we can go to the very top. We can get our color temperature set exactly how we want. So that's going to look really nice. If we want to change some of our uh, saturation or hues, we can do that here, see the effects on our color checker. We can also go in and start setting uh, some of our curves. So we can go to the tone curve here, and this is where we can turn on our clipping. So we can see if we have anything overexposed or underexposed by clicking these little triangles. Then we can start looking at the blacks, the darks, the mids and the whites here on the color checker as well as the bottom here in uh, our color chips. So as we're going in here and adjusting things like the shadows, we can see if any of the absolute blacks are starting to clip. We can see that yes, they are starting to clip. We pulled those shadows in too much. So we need to bring those out until that stops to clip. And also we can see if we do some things like maybe adjusting our exposure, if we're getting things. So you can see this lights up red saying, hey, you're losing detail at the brightest of the brights. It's way too much. So bring that back. So we're getting some warnings here, and we know not just that we have warnings, but exactly where in our color palette and in our tonal range where things are changing. We can also do some double checking to make sure that our color is actually um, consistent. For example, if you look closely on the bottom of this little thing that pops up with the color picker, at the very bottom we see R, G, and B with some percentages. And that tells us uh, how much the percentage of red, green, and blue that's in that patch. And it shouldn't vary more than about 1%, maybe a little bit more, but not too much more. Because if we see a big sway of maybe too much red or green or blue, then you'll see that that's going to spike. And we'll know that we have a color cast. So I can go looking over all these different chips to see that's 89, 88, 88.8 really, really close. We're seeing that these are consistent colors, less than 1% uh, of any kind of problems. Now I could force this, so let's do this so we have this horrible color here. Now we can see that we've got clipping in this white. We've got issues there. We can start looking and you can see that we have red 1, green 11, and blue 13. Obviously we have a color cast. And obviously you can see it here, she looks like a Martian. Well, I could just pick a neutral color, boom. And then once again, when I go over these, you can see we're back to less than 1% deviation between any of these. And so that we know our color is consistent, it looks good, and we can start increasing or decreasing our color temperature and color cast in a way that's calibrated and looks good and that we know it's going to be consistent. So once all of that stuff is done and we have our photo adjusted the way we want it, we know that our color is good. We can go back now to the library module. I can choose all of the photos that were in that set. Go right down to the very bottom to sync settings. I'll click that. And then I can choose to uh, adjust all of these things. Now I'm going to just say select all. I might not want to select all. So I might not want to have the crop there, the spot removal. But for sure you want your white balance, your basic tones, the uh, tone curve your color treatment, your color, and your um, calibration. You want all those. You want to make sure those are selected. So when I hit synchronize, it's going to take all the adjustments I made to this first photo. It's going to apply them to all the photos in that set. And so now all the color and all the photos are consistent and they're accurate. Now, if you're shooting outside, it's the exact same process. So you create a custom profile. You'd be able to go in there and make all of your adjustments. You can set your white balance based on, again, now this is a portrait, so we'd use this top row. If this was a scenic photo, you just sit this on a bench or a chair or ha maybe hand hold it, and you would also be able to use this bottom slider to set your scenic photo uh, color temperature. It's going to be good, and everything's going to work out. It's very, very simple, very, very powerful, and I use this constantly in my post-production workflow. Well, thanks so much for an awesome question, Daryl and Quack. 
It's been awesome working with the Color Checker Passport this week. Now remember, if you are new to color and color theory, you can always go over to the Adorama Learning Center. There's all kinds of articles about color and white balance and using different gear to get similar results. And don't forget, episode 13 is all about white balance. And so make sure you watch that if you're new to color theory. Well, if you have a question about uh, photography or photography gear, you can send your questions to me at askmark at adorama.com and we might just use it on an upcoming episode. Well, thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Well, guys, absolutely. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit SnapFactory.com.